Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about the most powerful thing about the GitHub Copilot and that is the agent. So far in the previous videos, we were learning about how to chat with GitHub Copilot and GitHub Copilot was able to make some changes in our editor inline. But in this video, we will do something very powerful. And this powerful thing is the agent mode in the GitHub Copilot. This is my VS code. And in this VS code, if I want to work with the agent mode, then I have to enable it first. How to do that? So over here again, I'm going to click on this button because this is the only way to open the GitHub Copilot. Now at this place, if you will notice, there are three options in this drop down menu. But in this video, we are going to work with the agent. So make sure you are selecting the agent over here. Now, because of any reason, if you see that this agent mode is not visible in your VS code, then you have to enable it and how to do that. So for that, you have to go to the settings of this VS code. How to do that? Click on the settings icon and click on this setting link or button over here. Or you can also use this shortcut, which is control plus comma. You can open the same thing from this file preferences and the settings. You will get the same window. Now at this place, you have to search for chat dot copilot then there is this first option over here make sure that this is checked if it is unchecked then the agent mode will be disabled from your vs code now let's check the same setting in the visual studio yes this visual studio is also having the agent mode in the github copilot so let's see how to enable the agent mode in the visual studio so for that again i'm going to click on this github copilot thing click on this setting and click on these options now it will directly open the options from your Visual Studio that are specific to the GitHub Copilot. You can also open all these options by clicking on these tools and the options. Now here we are in the GitHub and by default here you will notice that there is this checkbox again enable the agent mode. So if you will click on this one then the agent mode will be enabled in your system. Alright so once you will enable this agent mode then you will notice that there is this one more setting button over here which is called as tools. Let's click on this one and you will see that by default, the GitHub Copilot in the agent mode will enable all these tools for you. If you think that you want to ignore some of them or you want to uncheck some of them, then you can do that. If you want to make some more changes, let's say you have enabled some of the tools or you want to just reset them. So you can fix all of them over here, this GitHub Copilot and these tools. So all the tools that you have configured will be placed over here. And from this place, you can manage all of them. After all these steps, we have enabled the GitHub Copilot in both our editors, which is VS Code and the Visual Studio. Let's first start this thing in the Visual Studio code. Okay, so let's just close the settings and here let's just expand this chat window. Here we are in the agent mode and make sure that whatever model you are having, you can choose your model from this place. Here I'm giving this command to this GitHub Copilot at Hey GitHub Copilot, create a new application using ASP.NET Core to perform the current operations. Make sure to use Entity Framework Core in memory database. And you have to create this application in this 004 folder. So this is the one that I have created, 004. Let's see how things will work now. Now the agent mode has started its work. And first it is asking us to continue. What is that? So basically over here you will notice that this is a command that this agent mode want to use. And by default, if there is something that GitHub Copilot wants to execute on some other tool, for example, command prompt or terminal, then it will ask your permission. So instead of running the command directly by GitHub Copilot, first it will give you the chance to review what command it is going to execute. So what is the command? It is going to execute this command .NET new web API and products API. So basically this is a very simple command and yes, we can continue. And where is the place? This is the place where this GitHub Copilot is going to use this command. Click on this continue button and let's see how it goes. So it means you are having a proper control on the GitHub Copilot and it won't make or it won't perform anything unnecessary in your system because it can do so many powerful things. All right. So here you can notice that the application has been created. Even on the left hand side, you can see that the basic structure of the application is there. Now it is asking us again to run one more command to add these packages. So what is the package? .NET add package. This is the package name, the EF code in memory. This is what we have told. If you want to work with the SQL Server or some other Postgres databases, then you can use or tell the GitHub Copilot to use your exact operation or requirement. And based on that, the GitHub Copilot will perform the operations. Now let's quickly check what agent is doing over here for us. So first it has created the project by itself. Now he has created this product, uh, new class and the DB context, this DTO, these services, the controller. So program.cs, there are some changes. 
Now, the GitHub Copilot wants to remove the default API that we get, which is the weather forecast. So how to remove that? So basically, this is the command to remove that item from the application. So remove item is the PowerShell command. And let's click on this continue button. And basically, it will remove this file from your system. Now, it is going to create a new readme file about what exactly is this API and what are the operations over there. Now, you can notice that it has created everything. Let me build and run the application to make sure everything works correctly. Okay, so at this place, if you want to save all these files, click on this key button. So in case if you want to undo them or you do not want to save the changes, then you can click on this undo button. But if everything looks good, then you can click on the key button. So by default in this video, I do not want to review the code myself. I want the GitHub Copilot to do everything for me. So let's click on this key button. And if you want the GitHub Copilot to run your application, then you can click on this continue button. So it will build the application. So let it build. Let's see how it goes. Did you notice that there is one more terminal that this GitHub Copilot has open over here? And this GitHub Copilot is running all these commands over here and it is reading the output of that command from this terminal window. So the build is successful. Now it wants to run this application. And yes, the command for run is this .NET run. So, and because this GitHub Copilot is going to execute this command on the terminal. So this is asking about your permission. Click on this continue button and let's run this application. Here you can notice that we are having the output from this command. So now it is creating a script to test all the API endpoints that it has created. And this is the PS1, the PowerShell command over here. All right, so let it do whatever it is doing. And then based on that, we will test everything by ourselves too. Now you can notice one interesting thing is that the main important window is almost gone from your editor. We were having that main window to write our code, but now we don't even need that because the agent is doing everything for us. But don't rely too much on this agent mode. You must review the code that it is writing for you before doing any major change. But here you can notice that on the right hand side, we are having the GitHub Copilot. Here we are having the terminal window where this GitHub Copilot is executing all the commands. And on the left hand side, we are having all our files. And because of this, any person who is not having any skills and knowledge about the programming can develop the applications from scratch. Let's analyze the code that it has created for us. So in the program.cs file, it has created this add controllers, add db context, add scoped. What is this? This is a service that is used to get the data, basically the CRUD operations on this product. Then the open AI, add codes, allow all, which is fine. And at this place, it is ensuring that the database is created before you use it. If it is in development, then it is mapping the open AI. HTTPS redirection use course authorization map controllers run. Now let's see what is there in our controller. In our controller, we are having this one file, which is the product controller. This is the constructor. This is the service. Basically, it is using the dependency injection and which is very, very nice. So this is the first endpoint to get all the products and get product. Basically, uh, this is how it is getting all the product. Then get product by ID is also there. By category is also there, which is nice. Create a new product. First, it will check the validations. If the model state is valid, then only it will proceed. Otherwise, it will give you the bad, bad request at this place. Update, delete, very nice. Now let's see what is there in this DTO. So we have one class, which is this name, description, price, stock quantity. All the properties are there for the product. Plus, you will notice that there are some validations also, which is really nice, actually. Now, let's see what is there in the model. So we are again having this model, and I think the mapping is done in between this model and the DTO. So let's say what is there in the data. It has the DB context. This is our DB context file. It has created this constructor, the options it is passing to the base, which is really nice. And this is our own model creating. It is just setting up one table over here, the product table, and it has all these properties. Max length, again, all the validations are also placed at this place. And I think this is the default data. Yes. So model builder entity has data. So make sure that whenever you are running this application, it has these three records. Why? Because we are going with the in-memory data. And every time you will run your application, then there must be some data in your database just for the testing purpose. But remember this GitHub Copilot has created this test API PS1 for us. Let's see what is there. So at this place, we can notice that this is the base URL and this is something that it is writing to check your code. So what is there in the test page.html? So there is one extension that I have already installed. 
which is the live server let's click on this open with live server and see how it will work so you can notice that this is the page that we are having product api test interface load all the products we are having three product over here and it can load all of them at this place get product by id okay nice so let's say i'm passing two over here click on this here you can notice we are having only one product with this id two if i'm going with one you can notice we are changing it and this is really nice so github copilot has done all these things for us otherwise if you are going to implement something like this then you will see that it will take some extra time if you want to create a new product then you can use this thing i'm writing test make this product this is the test description prices let's say 100 store quantity is 100 category is test click on this create product i think it has been created for us let's load all of them yes you can notice that this is over here load all the products which is working really nice if you want to update something then one click on this update please fill all the required fields which is really really nice if you want to delete something then you can delete it this is the api re response in the json format this is extremely useful and extremely good even you can notice that if you are using the swagger or some postman then you are not getting that kind of beautiful ui but here this github copilot has created a beautiful ui for us to test all these things which is extremely good and really amazing let's ask to create a new solution file over here can you create a new solution file for this app okay so there is some typo but let's ignore the typo also and we need to make sure that this github copilot is understanding if you are making some typo mistakes as well so what it will do it will basically create a new solution file for us so this is dotnet new solution this is how we can create a new solution file by using the dotnet cli click on the continue button and this is almost done the file was created successfully now it is adding the cs pros of this application that we were just working on to that solution file so it has created a new solution file for us which is fine and i think it is doing some extra things so sometimes this is also a thing about this github copilot that you will ask for less and it will give you more so i just want to add a new file but it has created all the files and so many things for us so let's just stop the execution because i don't want to use this anymore and let's just close it now i want to open the same solution in our visual studio at this place you can notice that we are having the same application loaded in the visual studio and it has all the files everything is there so we can start from this http file right now you can notice that in our http file we have the default url that we generally use for the weather forecast but now this has been removed so let's talk to this github copilot and make sure we are using the agent mode so so i have given one command to update this http file with all the endpoints that are available in this application the best part about agent is that it can create or make the changes in your actual files here you can notice that again it has done the really good job for us so it has removed this weather forecast you can notice that it is the it is in red line red background rest everything is i think newly created let's click on this keep now here you can notice that the github copilot is telling us that this http file was updated successfully for us and these are the available endpoints now i want to test one of them and let's assume that uh, where is the one to get all the records so this is the one to get all of them click on this send request and see how it will work this application is not running and because of that we are not getting any kind of output but now let's run this application and see how it will work let's just send the request again and see how it goes this time you can notice that we are having all three records over here okay now let's assume i want to create one more so by default the body is there with the proper json so click on the send and you can notice you are getting this 201 which is the successful created let's try this send request again to get all the records and now there should be one additional record which is this wireless headphone so this is working really nice and by using the github copilot you can perform so many things now let's commit and push our code so i'll ask this github copilot to do that for us so first it is adding this git add dot then git commit add product api and then it is it is doing this git push so so everything will be done for you by the github copilot and this is how you can make your development simple you don't have to discuss anything with anyone now just use the github copilot as your 
really co-pilot and things will be super easy and super simple for you but don't trust the github copilot blindly make sure whenever this github copilot is making any change in any of your application or any part of your application it is fixing the bug or adding new feature then make sure you are reviewing the core of what github copilot is doing now let me know your thoughts about this github copilot in the comment section below and i hope this github copilot will be super helpful for you in your development journey if you have any questions any feedback any suggestion feel free to ask or share everything in the comment sections and i will see you in the next video thank you for watching have a great day